Nope, we don't need to speed up the process. We don't need to nuke this. You know why? Because this is the non-microwave truth. I am CL Whiteside, and this is brought to you by Time of Grace Ministry. This podcast, this podcast right here is geared towards challenging culture's truth and culture's perspective. And you know how we do that? We do that using God's word, looking at the Bible. And, and that's what I call the non-microwave truth right there. Now, we're going to talk a lot about movies and TV shows and the concept and idea of main characters and supporting cast and stars. And we're going to keep our first world problem question in the same ballpark. And the first world problem question is this. What is the best biblical or supposed Christian movie you have seen? What is the best biblical or Christian movie you have seen? And I got to Google in this because I'm like, I, don't, I guess I can't even think of a lot of Bible based or Christian movies. And of course, what popped up like The Passion of Christ, Noah, Saul has a movie. The Book of Esther has a movie. Samson has a movie. They had Mary Magdalene having a movie. Exodus, God and Kings. That, that was a movie. But the movie that I say is the best is actually a book first. And that movie is The Shack. If you haven't seen it, you got to go check it out. I'm not going to say it's 100 percent doctrinally sound, but the way they depict things in there is just so unique and interesting. And it just gives you a different perspective. Like, go watch that. Matter of fact, I need to watch that with my boo because I don't think she's seen it. And you know what? I'm tired of watching Hallmark Christmas movies like Hallmark ain't even the same as it used to be. But let me get a list of movies because I need to check these out. Hopefully when I get some free time. But what do you think is the best biblical or Christian movie? I love to hear from you. Instagram, Twitter. My handle is Champion Life 23. If you're on TikTok, drop it in the comments. YouTube, drop it in the comments. What is the best biblical or Christian movie you have seen? You can even tell me why. And this is our first world problem. It is dinner time. The title of our episode is The Guide to Starring in Your Own Movie of Life. And I just want you to think about this. Like how many times do you view yourself as the main character in your life and everybody else is a supporting character or a supporting cast member or, or extras? Then I also want you to think about like, who is the number one person in life you aim to please? Like how many times are we aiming to please ourselves, serve ourselves, be concerned about ourselves? And that makes me just realize and think about like how much should we focus on ourselves and how much should we embrace that mentality like we are the main character in our life. Like, is there some type of balance we should find? And that's what we're going to look at in this episode today. And I just want you to think about this right away. If you are thinking you are the main character and you have to control the script or you have to write the script so bad. That's where you easily can be led to feelings of entitlement. You can be led to feelings of ignorance. You can be led to uh, feelings of like having a victim mentality or being anxious or worried or hopeless at times. And sometimes we can flat out be lost and wandering on the wrong path because we feel like we got to write the script or the script isn't the way we want it to be. So we got to we got to try to fix it or kind of got to control it. And should that be the case? Now, on this episode of The Guide to Starring in Your Own Movie of Life, I got three big points for us today to, to look over and to discuss. And the first one is this. Like, let's say, sure, you want to say you are the main character in your movie of life. OK, cool. That's fine. But what we got to realize is you and I aren't the stars in our movies of life. You know who the star is. And thank God is him. It's Jesus. Jesus is the star character in all our movies of life and thank god for allowing us to realize that we got it we need, we need to treat it like that though now one big thing that i want to just point out let's say you don't feel like you are the main character what we got to remember is that and this is a mentality that i try to live by it is better to be the opening act for god than the main event for man because when you're the main event for man, that's when you to live by the world. That's when you to live outside of God's will and outside of what God is telling you to do. So it's better to be the opening act for God than the main event for man. But what does the world tell you to do? The world tells you to be the main event. The focus has to be on me, myself, and I. But, but what does God's word say? And for those who sometimes look and say, you know what? All right, I'm the main character. I'm a supporting character. Whatever you want to say, I just don't feel like I'm worth anything. I feel like I, I'm worthless. What does Ephesians 2 verse 10 tells us? 
It says, for we are God's masterpiece. You hear what it said? For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So God has already planned for us to do some great things. And it didn't say we were trash. It says we are God's masterpiece through Christ Jesus. We, we are new through Christ Jesus, his victory that he has granted to each and every one of us. So that's such a blessing. Now, when you think about this, what is the world's trick? The world's trick is to get us enamored with so many different people in this world. Now, who are the people that we're usually enamored with? We're enamored with people with a lot of fame, a lot of money, people that have big titles. But God is like, hold up, wait a minute. When you are a believer, you are part of a greater group than the fame, the popular and all that stuff. You are a part of the body of Christ. And you have to realize you have gifts. You have an important role in this body. And look at this. This is 1 Corinthians 12. I'm going to read the CSB version. It says, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I don't belong to the body. It is not for that reason any less a part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body. It is not for that reason any less a part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? But as it is, God has arranged each one of the parts in the body just as he wanted. And if they were all the same part, where would the body be? So do you understand that? He's saying every single part matters. You matter. I matter. Why? Because we are part of the body of Christ as believers. And sometimes we go on the opposite end of the spectrum and we kind of have this this mentality. I call this the Luke 9 verse 46 mentality. Like, man, we start arguing about who's the greatest and I'm greater than this person and I'm more important than this person. And that's why the, I'm the star. That's why I'm the main character. And what did what were they arguing about? Luke 9 verse 46, an argument started among the disciples as to which one of them would be the greatest. But I just want you to think about this. Think about movies in our day and age. Right. A good actor, he wouldn't mind taking a lesser role to star with a great actor. And we have the greatest, the most perfect actor, the most perfect character. That's Jesus. That's who we got. We, we got Jesus. And this reminds us in Philippians 2 verse 9, like Jesus is the greatest. He is the greatest. He is perfect. Therefore, God exalted him to the highest place and gave him, that's Jesus, the name that is above every name. Jesus name is above every name. And that's why I said he's the star. We, you could say we the main character or whatever, but Jesus is the star in, in all our movies of life. It's like whether you realize that or not, we should treat it this way, though. Now, think about that. We put athletes, we put politicians, we put um, the wealthy, we put all these different people on a pedestal. We put them on a pedestal. But in the think about this, this didn't just start now. This also step started in, in Jesus time. Who did they put on pedestals? They put kings like they used to talk about King David and, and King Solomon. They talked about Moses and Abraham and they were so great. But that passage reminds us Jesus is the name that is above every name. You did you get that? Jesus is greater than, than all those names. Jesus, Jesus is considered greater than all the greats back then and even the people that we consider great right now. Now, on this episode, the guide to starring in your own movie of life, there's this. This is my second point. We have to understand. And I kind of alluded to this a little bit before we are connected to others. And when we're connected to others, that gives us a completely different mentality, a completely different approach, especially as believers. When you understand you're connected to another believer in some form or some fashion, like that makes your whole entire approach different. Now, I think about this like this. I look at this as if we if we had that approach, it would allow us to have that crossover TV show mentality. And if you're like, what is the crossover TV show mentality? It's like when all of a sudden uh, Law and Order SVU people, they go and they own like Chicago uh, fire or Chicago PD or like they own regular law and order and then they come on SVU. I don't know. I just love law and order. So I got to use law and order as an example. But it's like you can cross over and you can connect with, with other people. And at times the, the enemy wants us to have this mentality or sometimes our sinful nature wants us to have this mentality that, you know what? It's super weird that that God cares about us. Like, is it it's super weird that God cares about me? Or, you know what? God only cares about them. And if God only cares about them, then he doesn't love you or, or he doesn't love me. Or, you know, if God is busy attending to them and, and blessing them, 
then he has no time for me. When in reality, when in reality, our God is big enough, he's special enough, he's powerful enough, he's good enough to be there for every single one of us to have an individual personal relationship with each and every person. He is more than enough. He is more than enough. So though we are connected with other people, God has an individual script for each and, and every one of us. And, and it's more than enough. So in a sense, you are the main character, but you just got to realize that you are not the only character. You and I are the main characters in our movie of life, but we aren't the only characters. And when we understand this, this helps us demonstrate um, having care, having love, having the ability to, to pray for others. And James 5 verse 16 tells us to do this. It says, therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So even though you the main character in your movie of life, don't forget that you can cross over with other people and also don't forget to, to pray for them because that's what our Lord tells us to do. Now, the third point that I want to get at is that God is the director. God is the director. So you know what we need to do? Let him direct. Let him direct. OK, how do we let God direct? We let God direct by looking at what the script says, which is the word, which is the Bible. And what will that do for us? What does the Bible do for us? Second Timothy three, verse 16 tells us all scripture. It didn't just say certain parts of scripture. It says all scripture is God breathed and is useful. What is it useful for? It's useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And you got to remember, God has planned in advance good works for us to do. We can be thoroughly equipped, equipped by how getting in God's word and, and reading the script and seeing what it is that he have has in store for us. Now, I just want you to think about this as well. What will movies or TV shows do when you watch them at time and there's a really, really good director? Right. Let's say this is a director. This ain't got nothing to do with God right now. But what do good movies and good TV shows do when they have a good director? They will have you rooting for serial killers. They will have you justifying gangsters and the, them selling drugs and, and killing people. A good director, a good TV show will have you rooting for a person having an affair and having a scandalous life. That's what good directors will do. And that's a lot of times what the world is, is doing with us. It's giving us a completely different script than what God has in, in store for us. We have to read the script of, of the Bible. And, you know, I promise you, I promise you, it is amazing. And a lot of times when we talk, when I talked about us rooting for gangsters and people having affairs, we're rooting for them out of the flesh. When we read God's script, what that allows us to do, that allows us to look at these people who are living those type of lifestyles really in our lives and have empathy for them. Be able to show them love still be able to have a biblical perspective with it and not be envious and say, man, I wish I could get away with that stuff. I wish I had this or I had that because that person, they might be doing wrong, but they look like they're getting blessed. When we read the script of the Bible, it has us loving them and not rooting for them in sin. It has us being empathetic to them. It has us having opportunities to to share God's word with them, to plant different seeds so that they can be brought up in, in, in a different way. Now, if you realize about a script movie scripts, TV scripts, scripts usually have a good guy and they usually have a bad guy, a protagonist and an antagonist, right? Now, the Bible, the script that we need to be in, it has a real good guy, a perfect guy by the name of Jesus. It's the greatest love story of any love story. And then you also are amazed at the different miracles he did and, and the power that he distributed. And, and the ways that he handled things, it's, it's mind blowing. It's an amazing story, an amazing love story that is for you and for me. What, what are some awesome points with that? And the only reason we're deemed as good guys, as believers now, is because of the Holy Spirit gifting us with salvation, gifting us with that faith through Christ Jesus. So now we are new. We are new and good because of that. When we think about that, we have to realize that God's script is so much greater than the world script. God's script, the Bible, is so much greater than all the other scripts that give like half truths, give partial truths. Sometimes they just flat out lie because it's too many lies 
and other scripts out here. It's too many um, scripts saying you can become a star doing this and you can become a star doing that and you can be. The, and it's like, no, what does God's word say? That is the greatest script for you and for me so that I can be great and you can be great. But it's through God and it's not through our own sinful flesh or through the world. Now, I just want to read a, a passage to you from Matthew four, verse four. That reminds us of this. It says, Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. How do we get that, that word from the mouth of God? Being in the word, being in prayer. So if you really want to live your best life, if you really want to star in your role, live by God's word, live by God's word. And another big thing that we have to understand, and this is a part of acting, this is a part of movies, this is a part of TV shows is timing. Timing matters so much. Now, our world tells us we got to speed up the timing. If we, if it's not going as fast as you wanted to take matters into your own hand. But God says, no, no, no. Trust my timing. And we should trust our director's timing. Sometimes he wants us to star in this role or sometimes he wants us to play this part. But we got to trust his timing, even though sometimes like, man, I want it now. I got to have it now. No, no. Trust his timing. Galatians 6 verse 9 tells us this. Let us not become weary in doing good. Let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. How many times do we give up and we start doing things like the world or like our flesh tells us to do it? But this passage clearly tells us, like, don't become weary in doing good, even if you don't necessarily like the part that you have right now. You don't like the character that you are right now. Keep doing good. Keep doing it God's way, because at the proper time, you're going to reap a harvest. Like that's that's what God tells us. And sometimes it, it, it's about us taking that time to change our perspective and change what we want, because some of the stuff we want sometimes is is high garbage. But that harvest can be so many different things. A lot of times we look at it from a success criteria or treasures of this earth. But there are gifts that God can give us from a spiritual um, idea or a spiritual realm that we oftentimes overlook. But that's the point of this passage. Galatians six, verse nine. Now, when you think about Jesus, how did Jesus and why did I say Jesus was the star in our lives and why should we treat him as a star? First thing, and this is so many things that we can learn from Jesus and how he is a star and that that main character truly. Um, Jesus was always humble, but he was a confident in his approach. Like he trusted the script of, of the father. He trusted the script of the father. Jesus always shared the word and he was always willing to serve. Remember he talked about the uh, the first being last and the last being first, like the greatest should be should make themselves the least. And that's what Jesus did. The most powerful person born in the manger. Like he has some humble upbringings. Why did he do that? Because he loves you and I so much and he's trusting and, and following the father's script. Jesus always refuted counterfeit and bootleg scripts like he always he, he wasn't messing with those, man. Sometimes we try to mix up like the script of the Bible and the script of the world and like let me do both i can i can be a character in both of these and it's like no you 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 can't do both you can't do both like do it the lord's way do it the lord's way um jesus never chased approval he never chased approval from from man and when we look at this jesus actually took time out to study the script and that's something that you and i should do take time to study the script jesus even meditated over the script Jesus even found time to be alone, to hear from the father and, and to meditate on the words that his father had given him. Now, to, to wrap up this episode of the guide to starring in your own movie of life, I just want to leave you with two big things to just remember. You can be the main character, but you ain't the only character. You can be the main character, but you're not the only character. And you always we always have to be remembering and thankful for the fact that we have a star character because there's going to be some times that we slip up it's going to be some times that we mess up sometimes and we flat out sin but that star character is there to to pick us back up that star characters remind you like hey i paid for the sin you are forgiven you messed up on that line but boy i still got you i, I still got you and he still makes it right he still makes it approved by the by the director or through the director and the second thing i want to leave you with on this episode of the guide to starring in your own movie of life is this. We got to remember and, and thank God and praise God for the fact that Jesus is the star. Jesus is the star. He is the star of all of our movies. 
And we don't have to be the bad guy. We can be the good guy with him. And it's not because of what we have done. It's because Jesus lived a perfect life, died for us and granted us the victory. So when critics that matter, look at our movies of life. They look at the movie of life and they say, oh, look at CL's movie of life. You know what they get a review? They give it a 10 out of 10 and say it's a perfect movie. And that's because Jesus is starring in that movie. And there will be times when we sin. There will be times where you mess up on lines. But you know who's there to pick it up and to make it right? Jesus. And that's something that we always, always, always can love and thank him for and live our lives with, with freedom knowing that. And the second thing with that is this. The spirit. The spirit is the one who gives us the gifts. He gives us the ability to be transformed and to take the role that we have and to start in that role. The spirit transforms us to do that. It encourages us to do that through the word and through the sacraments. And that's such a blessing right there. So sometimes when you're thinking about your movie of life, remember, Jesus is the star and Jesus is the one that makes the movie a, a perfect movie and gets it a perfect review and makes it a 10 out of 10. And this is the non-microwave truth. Thanks for joining me on this episode of The Guide to Starring in Your Own Movie of Life. If you liked this episode or loved it, make sure you hit the five star, leave a review, share it with a friend, share it with a brother or sister of Christ. Peace punch, Captain Crunch. Say no to drugs and yes to Jesus. I am out.